Okay, so I have a question for you. How strong are you in basic mathematics? Well, if your answer is, uh, yeah, I'm pretty strong. I'm, I'm pretty confident in my basic math skills. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I have a challenge for you. Go ahead and put your calculator away and see if you can figure out this problem. 1% of 0 0.01, what is that equal to? Again, we don't want to use our calculator. And uh, if you think you can solve this problem, without a calculator. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, you're going to need to know a little bit about percent, decimals, fractions, place values. I don't really want to give you too many hints here because I want to uh, give you the full opportunity to figure this thing out uh, all on your own without a calculator. Now, if you're uh, you know thinking about this problem, you're like, well, I know the only way I could do this is with a calculator. Well, go ahead and you know do the problem anyways, all right? Uh, so don't, you know, uh, do not like not participate because you're like, well, I can't do this without a calculator, but I could definitely do it with a calculator. Well, then go ahead and figure it out as well, because that still, you know, shows me that you have some understanding of how to solve percent problems. This is very, very important as percent is probably one of the most, if not the most important practical math skill that we all need to understand. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you the correct answer to this question. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through uh, the steps to solve this without a calculator in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. I, it's my true calling, my true passion to help as many people as, uh, as possible to learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. So if you're struggling in math, okay, please do not give up. Okay, I'm going to tell you the three things Everyone needs to be successful in mathematics. The first is you got to be willing to work hard, right? You got you need a strong work ethic. There are no shortcuts. So if you're looking for the easy way out, it just simply doesn't exist. The second thing you need is encouragement. Okay, and this is really important uh, for those of you that have are you know having a tough time in math, or for those of you that are doing well in math and then you run into a roadblock. Then now you're like, oh, now math is hard. I'm I can't figure this thing out. You need encouragement. You need someone saying, hey, keep going. You can, you can do this, you can figure this out, and I'm telling you that you can, but you need this third component. That is great math instruction. You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. See, nothing's more frustrating to be, you know, trying to learn math where you're totally confused on what's being taught to you, right? That's where, you know, trouble uh, starts. So math is a technical subject. The way I like to teach math is to explain it to e in easy to understand language for everybody. Uh, without watering down the topics or the skills that you need to know, okay? And that comes from years and years of experience in teaching mathematics. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it that you're getting ready for, uh, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it. In the description of this video, I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave uh, links to my notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of students still won't take any notes. If you truly want to be awesome in math, you have to take awesome math notes. Okay, that's super critical. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 1% of 0 0.01, put that calculator away. Just imagine, you know, um, we went back in the time machine, maybe like 75 years. I really have to go back some, you know, <laughs> some decades. I went to uh, high school in the 1980s. I mean, the personal calculators were kind of coming out, I believe, like in the early 1970s. And like real, real, real basic calculators, uh, you know, somebody out there may have even bought some, uh, but, you know, they were like hundreds of dollars. They were pretty, pretty expensive, but that was a real treat for like engineers and whatnot to own one of these things. Beyond uh, an actual calculator, like a, like electronic calculator, you had these things that uh, were called slide rules and abacus. And so there was always some form of calculating machines back there. But let's just think of ourselves as math students way back, maybe like in the 1920s or something, and we just had to figure this out with nothing but a pencil and a piece of paper. So what is the answer? Well, here you go. So your answer could be 0 0.001, and of course that's equivalent to the fraction of 1 over 10,000. All right, so how did you do? Okay, were you able to get this answer or this answer without the aid of a calculator? Well, that's very impressive 
Matter of fact, let me give you a nice little happy face in a plus plus, a 130% and multiple stars. See, when I went to school, and uh, probably a lot of you back in the good old days, the most you could get was like 100%. Uh, you know, but these days, and of course, your GPA would be like a 4.0. That was the most you could get. But these days, you can you do like you know over 100%. You can get like 150%, and like you know crazy GPAs like 9.2 GPAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Listen, I'm not trying to knock how uh, you know there's something called grade inflation where you know hey we just keep going up and up and up you know uh, you know giving ourselves nicer grades. It doesn't make a difference in math. You either get the problem right or wrong. But for me. I tell you what, if you were able to do this without a calculator, that is definitely cause for celebration. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and quickly just break this problem down in this manner, okay? What type of problem are we dealing with? Well, we're trying to find a percent of a number, okay? So, for example, if I said, hey, what is 7% of 30, okay? 7% of 30, this would be... A, um, a problem that is the same type of problem the one we're dealing with here. Okay, so anytime in math where you're confused about the problem, we are confused with the numbers being involved, maybe switch the numbers out to something a little bit easier and see if you can remember how to do a problem like this. So how do we do uh, this problem, 7% of 30? Of course, if you have your calculator, you'll be like, oh yeah, I have to change uh, this percent into a decimal. Uh, then I multiply it by 30 and I would get the answer. And that's exactly what we need to do here. We have a uh, percent. We want to find a percent of a number. So the procedure, if you will, is we need to take that percent and we need to change it into a decimal or a fraction. Okay. So remember, decimals can be re represented as a fraction. The decimal 0. 0.5 is equal to the fraction, for example, one half. So you know, we're so used to using our calculator, we always think in terms of decimals, but we can also have a fraction equivalent. You're going to see how this comes into play in a second. So we need to take this out of a percent form and turn it into a decimal or fraction form, and then we just simply multiply it by the number, and we get our answer. So for the example of 7%, uh, what is 7% of 30? That would just be 0 0.07, right? That's uh, converting 7%. Uh, into a decimal, then we multiply by 30 on our calculator and we would get the answer. So hopefully uh, this makes sense to you. You're like, yep, yep, that's how I, that's how I do percent. I knew, I knew, you know, I know what you're talking about. So if you know what I'm talking about, that's excellent. So now what we have to do is simply uh, convert this percent into a decimal or fraction, and then we're going to multiply by this number here. And this is where we're going to have to break out our good old-fashioned arithmetic skills. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how we change a percent to a decimal, okay? So now I should have put in here, or a fraction. So the deal is this. The way you go from a percent to a decimal, most people um, will think of it this way. If you're going to go from 7% and you're going to uh, write that as a decimal, you're going to convert that into 0 0.07, okay? You're going to write... 7% as 0 0.07. Why do you do that? Because 7% is the same thing as 7.0%. And you just know to move that decimal point over two places to the left. Okay. I would suspect most of you out there remember that that's how you do this. But if you want to uh, change percent into a decimal, technically what you're doing is dividing by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal point over two places to the left. Okay. So when you take a number, and you divide by 100, the decimal point gets moved over two places to the left, all right? So 7%, you could express is simply as 7 over 100. Of course, 7 over 100 is the same thing as 0 0.07, okay? So I'm saying 0 0.07, but this is really 0 0.07 as a, in terms of place value. is as, well, We could say this not as 7 tenths. This is 7 hundredths, okay? So let's go to continue on here. And uh, ch uh, remember, we need to change this percent to a decimal or a fraction. How do we do that? Just divide by 100 or scoot that decimal point over two places to the left. So 1%, okay, that's what we're dealing with here, is equal to 1 over 100 or the decimal point 0 0.01. So I can use 1 over 100, 1 one hundredths uh, or 0 0.01. Now, if I had my calculator, I would choose to use 0 0.01, but I'm going to use the fraction uh, equivalency or fraction equivalent of 0 0.01 or one hundredths, 
okay, 1 over 100 in this problem. You're going to see how here in, in a second, but you just need to know that 1% is equal to 1 over 100 and 0 0.01, okay, both are, um, you know, two ways to express 1%. Okay, so now I want to find 1% of this number. So instead of... Uh, uh, thinking of 1% as 0 0.01, I'm going to use the 1 over 100, and we're going to multiply that 1 over 100 times this number, 0 0.01. Well, what is 0 0.01? Well, we just, you know, figure that out. 0 0.01 is 1 over 100. Let's just quickly review place value. 0 0.1 is what? We say this as 1 tenths, right? This is the tenths place, so I can write that as 1 over 10. 0 0.01 is what? Well, this is the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. So that's equal to 1 over 100. Let's go ahead and continue the fun here. What's 0 0.001? Okay, well, this is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's equal to 1 over 1,000. All right, so I'm really putting your basic math skills to the test here. You know, decimals, uh, fractions, place value, all that stuff that we forgot. Listen, if you're like, yeah, I remember this. You know, I remember learning this, but I forgot this. Like me, I learned this way back in the good old 1970s, all right? So, uh, you know, <laughs> of course you forget this. And then we get dependent on our calculators. We forget all this stuff. But let's see if we can just kind of, you know, brush up all those cob cobwebs in our memories and get this uh, problem right. All right, so 1% of 0 0.01. 1% is equivalent to the fraction 1 over 100. 0 0.01 is also equivalent to the fraction of 1 over 100. So if we take 1 over 100 and times it by itself, 1 over 100, we will get the right answer. So what is 1 over 100 times 1 over 100? Well, that's going to be equal to, remember when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the respective numerators and the respective denominators. So that's going to be 1 over 100 times 100. So you're like, oh my goodness, what is 100 times 100? Well, just, you know, take a look at maybe this 100 and think of this as 10 times 10, right? That's what 100 is. So now you're like, oh, okay, so 100 times 10, that is 1,000. You know, break up these numbers in easier ways so you can kind of do some mental math. So this is 1,000 times 10. And uh, if you have 10, 1,000, how much do you have? 10,000. So that's 1 over 10,000. And, of course, you could write that as the decimal, okay, uh, 0 0.001, right? Here's the tenths. This is the thousands, or sorry, this is the tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. So 0 0.0001. So those of you that used your calculator, if you got this answer, now you see how to do it without the aid of a calculator. So why do I do problems like this? Well, listen, it's important to practice arithmetic skills and, you know, tie it all in. It's like making a big pot of, um, chicken uh, soup or something like right stew right you throw in some chicken and some onions some peppers you, know, you kind of like all you know mix it all in and then at the end what do you have you have something awesome right same thing here right what are we throwing in here we're throwing in some percent some decimals some fractions some place values and then we're going to kind of just let that kind of you know marinate in our brain so we can uh, you know we can refresh these skills that we learned okay even it's been decades and decades for you um, out there, you can, uh, you know, relearn this stuff. It's like riding a bike for a lot of you. So if you're like, yes, I learned that, but I forgot that. Well, it's important to have a arith strong arithmetic skills. Okay. So, uh, even if you go, if you're looking to, uh, get into like algebra or if you're studying algebra, um, a real typical area for uh, students that are like in algebra or beyond is they think they don't have to, um, have strong arithmetic skills. They're like, I don't need to know or remember that stuff because I have my calculator now. Listen, nothing could be further from the truth. You need to know how to deal with, um, you know, place value, decimals, fractions, you know, in algebra and beyond. Okay. So if you need a quick refresher on basic mathematics, I'm going to strongly suggest my math foundations course. It's a three chapter mini course. Uh, you can find it in my math help program. It's, it's just jam-packed full of all, all that basic stuff that we learned in elementary school. So uh, how to deal with um, decimals, you know, multiply decimals, all this stuff, fractions, percent, place value, all that kind of good stuff. That's a nice start for a lot of you out there that are, you know, looking to kind of get back into math. You just want to get your foundation set and then move on beyond there. I would suggest maybe checking out that course. I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well on basic mathematics. But whatever you do, you need to do something because, you know, you're not going to learn 
learn math by just watching you know me do it. Okay, you actually have to do the work, and uh, I would love nothing more but to uh, assist you along your math uh, journey. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.